When I need to photograph or video my minis, my solution has been setting up this white rotating base and backdrop in my spray booth. This lets me take advantage of the adjustable, nice even lighting. While this definitely works, I feel like it is potentially betraying my minis and hiding their inner beauty. Like this footage here where the reds just don't quite look right. Stick around and I'll show you how I glam up this photography setup. My first instinct when approaching this project was to use a bunch of foam that I have laying around to create a diorama like setup that can be inserted into my spray booth with room for my rotating display in the middle. I like the idea of using the spray booth because it already has great lighting and it's easily adjustable. First I plan to work on the backdrop, the piece of foam card that will sit in the back of my spray booth. I've measured it to fit within the booth both in terms of height and also partially cut other areas to make it easier to bend. To colour the foam board I'm going to use Liquitex inks through my airbrush. It should be noted right now that I could take my time and paint this up really nice and with lots of detail, but this isn't exactly what I'm going for. I don't want a backdrop that looks amazing. I want a backdrop that will make my models in front of it look amazing. And that is an important distinction, I think. My objective is to have a very dark and muted background that looks blurry and vaguely like trees. Once I'm done spraying, I also have a very healthy dose of matte varnish to lock everything in. I didn't use primer, so I was a bit worried that it would be easy to damage. But once the varnish was on, it felt pretty tough. This is how it looks. Again, nothing amazing, but it fits the design brief of what I was going for and should accentuate any model that's put in front of it. Next on the list was preparing the platform that the model will sit on. I didn't want to permanently transform my rotating stand, so instead I designed a solution that will sit over the top of the stand. This was made of a combination of styrofoam and thin EVA foam from my local hobby shop. You'll notice I also have foam cut out here that is surrounding the stand. After giving the project some more thought, I decided to scrap the idea of having a full diorama for a few reasons. One, it's a lot of material, time and effort for something that's just going to be for photography. Two, it's going to be very big and bulky. And three, again it just fits a single purpose, so I'd be better off investing that time effort and material into terrain for wargaming that I can place around the platform as needed. So that's what I intend to do. What I'm doing here is marking out some more foam that I can use as tiles on the platform. I was perhaps a little too hasty with this step. If I thought about it a little more I would have just marked out the tiles from the center without any spacing between the tiles. Yes I can still spread them out and I do but it doesn't quite look as fitting as it could be. I also use my mold line remover to create some indentations which will help with the painting to make them look like cracked tiles. You might notice off to the side I've glued some cork under the base. This was just to give it a little bit more height. Uh, it's not really important for the end result. For those who have been following this channel so far, you may have noticed a name change from Northy Miniatures to Northy Hobbies. While miniatures in itself is a pretty broad topic, I felt that as the channel grows I may do more like diorama and tabletop and even some art topics. This is not a change in direction for the channel, but more just an early change to the name while the channel is growing to better fit what I want it to become. Anyways, I just wanted to briefly address that, so let's get back to the photography platform. Now that the tiles are in place, I need some large bricks around the edge. To make these, I'm going to use Milliput. If you haven't seen Milliput before, you just get two sticks of 
clay, break off equal sized chunks, and mix them together. You mix them until you no longer see a difference in colour. Then it can be used to form in whatever shape you need. After applying the millipart to the model, it will take a few hours, but it will dry solid and without expanding or losing its shape. It's great for small projects like this. Next step, in between each of the tiles I need some ground texture. For this I'm going to spread some PVA glue in the gap and then sprinkle some fine grain dirt mix. This is a technique I use a lot when basing miniatures as it's very simple and adds a lot of texture. Once all of the material is glued, I like to coat it all with a heavily watered down PVA solution to help seal everything in and make sure you don't have material flaking off later or when you start putting miniatures on the surface. Once it is done, I left it overnight to dry, then use a rubber sculpting brush to apply texture paint to the sides and any other spots that didn't fill with dirt. This paste sticks really well, so it's much easier to do on the sides than trying to stick dirt. It also makes more sense and I think it looks uh, more appropriate. Here it is ready to paint. I'm going to lay down a base coat of black to get started. While I'm using an airbrush for this, there's no reason why you couldn't use a regular brush. It will just take a bit longer. The airbrush allows you to cheat a little more to get smooth edges with your lines. To paint the tiles in stone, I'm using Stonewall Grey. This is quite bright, but in a later step I'll be running a wash over the top of all the stone and this will darken it a fair bit. It probably seems counterintuitive to paint all of the rock and then paint it back to a similar colour that it was originally but it will feel a lot more cohesive when doing highlights and shades if this is properly covered and sealed. Now I'm using an Ag Agrax Earthshade wash over all of the stone areas. On the foam in particular, the areas of pooling actually help sell the effect of the stone quite a fair bit. Using a cream colour I'm going to work over the rock areas with a dry brush and outer edges of the rock to add some highlights. Once this is done I'll cover all the rock with Agrox Earthshade to pull it all together. The stone and rock are looking really nice, but it still feels a bit drab. So I'm going to get the green ink out again and add some interest points. I'm spraying this really lightly as I want it to tint the stone but not be overpowering. And I'm only selecting specific random locations to spray this. Now for the part of the process I really enjoy, the tufts. You could use flock or static grass, but as you can see, I have a lot of nice tufts, so I'm going to pick out a few that will add some interest points to this base. Applying tufts is really simple and can be done with nothing but a pair of tweezers. You could also glue them, but I haven't had any tufts fall off yet. So the glue that comes pre-applied is reasonably good. I'm focusing the tufts towards the outer edges because we do actually need some space for units to sit. 
without flattening the tufts every time. And here it is. I'm quite happy with the result, but let's see how it looks with some actual models on it. I had a lot of fun making this platform and I'll be definitely using it a lot in the future when photographing and videoing my miniatures. So what do you think? Do you have any comments or suggestions? Please leave them below and don't forget to subscribe if you would like to see more hobby content like this. Thank you for watching.